KNS Maximus here, this time with a quick review and comparison of coaxial cable crimpers and press fit tools. There are two different sty styles of tools that are commonly used with coaxial, like cable TV cable, as well as the other common style coaxial, which is, you know, commonly used for radio antennas, um, old, you know, 10 base 2, very old computer networking would use the thinner coaxial cable, but these style tools would be used with both essentially diameters and styles of cable. Now, as far as the crimpers, there's two common styles that people probably have seen, which is one style is like this, where they have the hex crimper, and then there's actually another style tool, such as one of these, where these work with the compression fittings. Now, the compression fittings versus the type of fittings that you might just find at you know Radio Shack or another electronics store, these are what you might find in an electronics store, where usually when the cable you know technician comes, uh, they're installing these kind of thicker, heavier duty uh, cable ends that have like little blue rings or collars on them. Those are compression uh, locking terminals, and those have since replaced, for in most instances, the actual hex crimp terminals, just because they're faster and tend to be a little bit more reliable uh, or less prone to user error during installation. This isn't a full test and demonstration, so that's why I don't have a pile of coaxial cable and fittings. I'm just here to talk to, uh, generally about the tools, and then in a future video, I will you know really do a test and side by side of how each of these perform. But this video is just so people have familiarity, and when they see some odd tools, say some crimpers that seem to have some you know oddball hex jaws, that they know what they are. They're for crimping uh, these style of coaxial cable fittings. And when you see other oddball tools such as these where they have like little spring-loaded uh, areas, this is for cables when they have the crimp fittings. And they have different dimensions. As you can see, this one's pretty close versus this one, which has a huge amount of space, but it also has a huge amount of throw. So this works with a, a wide variety. It even includes a couple of extra dies, which is nice about that one. But anyway, with the compression fittings, you just essentially would snap in the compression fitting into a tool like this and then it would it would be open excuse me you would put in your compression fitting and then you just use this and it would snap it down and then the little spring loaded thing is just to hold the cable and let's actually talk about some of these there are varying quality levels of these some of them have different features which that work out better than others uh, this particular one right here uh, is a very high quality ratcheting JVI crimper that is all steel. Even this big buckle around the top of the head uh, is a solid piece of steel. Uh, it uses a heavy steel die. So these are really nice. These are de designed essentially if you keep them oiled to last forever. This pair of crimpers, if you didn't lose them, would last a cable technician decades, literally. They just essentially would never wear out due to this, this type and style tool it is and the kind of job that it's doing. And being a ratcheting style, the big advantage to ratcheting crimpers is that they ensure that you get a full range and get a proper crimp, which is, you know, a big uh, real handy. And then this would be what a nice, uh, high-quality pair would look like. And you can see their style. They're not too bad, but if you have the cable, you snap it in, and then you just crimp it and pop it back out. Other ones, such as these orange ones, and I'm not sure what brand. I'll have to try to dig these up. Uh, aren't obviously as heavy-duty, but they are much lighter weight and a little easier to use which is nice about these is that they have a very this has a wide range i also like the fact that it has a little clip that actually folds over and locks in the cable versus being a spring-loaded snap they did make it pretty well they actually used three screws to hold on this end steel piece so that was wise but these little adapters here that's actually a jam nut so you can easily adjust in a precise fashion for this to push exactly how far you want it to in the particular type of connector you're using. And then we have a couple other different styles here. This particular one down, I'm not sure what this one's for, it's a particular type of you know radio communications. This one is actually for press fitting, uh, compression fitting BNC connectors and it fits just right inside there. And it's actually pretty nice that this, this makes this tool, even though it's simple, it works well and it's actually uh, pretty universal. We have other tools. Now, Harbor Freight, and I probably should have picked up some of those compression fittings, but Harbor Freight sells compression fittings. They also sell a tool that's similar to this. This is a higher quality version, 
but this is just a simple cable TV only. It just has a fixed sizing down there in the handle if we can get this to focus. And you just do the same thing. You put in the cable with the compression fitting and then this would just push it in and snap it in. Now, these are probably going to be the most common style that you may run into just because they are the most commonly knocked off. They're real simple and kind of basic. Uh, this is just what a high quality one would look like. The Harbor Freight would also work fine, but it's something that's done commonly enough where people want to move TVs around or something like that, and they don't want to pay all the expensive prices of a technician. Cable TV now is just as relevant as it ever has been because uh, there's very good internet that is delivered through cable TV. So it's kind of interesting is for decades, people have you know talked about these type of tools uh, so that they could do their own work with cable TV or you know coaxial cable as you, what is used in cable TV and it's still just as applicable today. These of course your satellite TV all of it all comes through that shielded coaxial cable it really makes a big difference. Now we have a set of uh, Thomas and Betts LRC's and these are just another version of that same thing. These are a little bit kind of I would say funky they're just uh, I, I would say more of a cheap design Maybe not as cheap as these blue ones up to the left, but they're per, they're definitely a cost competitive, but they're still uh, work pretty well. These are actually sergeants, and I you know, many reviews ago about pliers, I mentioned some parallel jaw sergeants. Sergeant actually has quite a few tools uh, I've found that uh, uh, are based on that parallel jaw. So when these close, you can see the two jaws actually stay flat to each other. And that's all this is, is just yet another version of one of those compression fitting crimping tools. This is just happens to be a very small kind of uh, plier size version of them. And this is actually really lightweight and easy to pocket um, and very cost competitive. And then we have ones like this, which are kind of funky. They work pretty well as far as mass. There's nothing that uh, uh, will outweigh this old Cable Pro here. Um, and this is way a lot of them were. This is uses a very strong anvil and die, and this is the same thing. It just retracts. You put in your fitting, and then you just press the handle down. If we can get this to stay focused, and it snaps in the compression fitting. This one's nice because it has both uh, number six and fifty nine, so the larger and smaller diameter, the two most common sizes of coaxial cable. And so that makes this tool a little bit handier just because it includes both those diameters uh, in the same unit. It's real basic. It does allow you to adjust how far there's a cam on this bottom handle, an eccentric bolt, kind of like how suspension is adjusted on a car. Actually, just the same as a, the way that suspension is adjusted on a car. And you just loosen this little uh, brass nut and lift up this wheel and you can adjust its position by lifting up the wheel and then getting it on a different stop and that will cause this little arm to move up and down in its, in its position allowing you to fine tune how far the plunger is going. And it, When I got these I probably had these for six months before I uh, finally decided to look them up because as far as a crimping tool this thing just doesn't make any sense. It's a very oddball crimping tool until you realize it's for uh, <laughs> compression fittings for coaxial cable TV. Here's more of a knockoff, but this would be what Cable Pro had for the more standard versions like these where you compress the collars. How these work, like you would strip your cable and it's usually a quarter inch of exposed wire and then a quarter inch of the inner exposed uh, sheathing and insulation. Um, you would fold little wires back and this you would just work and push onto the end of the cable. And then you would come in with a pair of these crimpers and just crimp them and it makes a little hex and holds it tight. So that's what the cable pros would look like, and these work pretty well. They're they have solid jaws. Uh, they're actually really pretty darn heavy, uh, but they're not the easiest thing to use. So you can use crimpers like these. Now I did do a review of the uh, Ideal Crimp Masters, and they were actually these Jensen's in which I had put these dies in. And the reason I had done that was because these dies in this style is what Harbor Freight has and happens to be when you search for ratcheting wire terminal crimpers, it's going to be this style professional uh, with these dies. But in reality, crimpers, and they usually have to be the same brand, Amp 
dies can be interchanged with AMP tools, but not with Ideal or Quest or Jensen tools and vice versa. But they have a variety of crimp bodies, and many of these crimpers are actually sold as crimp bodies alone without any dies. And then you pick and choose your dies, or you just pay like another $50 to $75 on top of a $50 to $75 crimp body uh, to get a die set. But what's really nice is that you get to pick and choose. You can say, I'm working on coaxial cable, and I want something a little more compact, so you can put the dies in here. Uh, in this instance, I swapped over and I actually had the wire terminal dies. I put them in these quests because the quests have um, our long handle and have just a lot more leverage. They're much easier to use uh, for crimping wire where you don't need quite as much pressure when you're just crimping coaxial cable. And we can see uh, actually on these, the jaws are a little shorter, so you have more leverage af after the fulcrum or the pivot, as well as having much longer handles. But that's just to show you that you know you can have a wide variety of crimp uh, of crimping dies and crimping handles, and they can technically all do different tasks, or they can actually all do the same tasks. It's just have up to how you want to configure them. There's also different kind of design styles, as we can see, like these Jensen's, and I forget which brand these are, but these are real nice. These are a real compact version of these Jensen's. They essentially have the same amount of leverage, just because. The jaws are so much closer in. They're you know nearly a half inch uh, closer in. They use real compact dies, so you get a lot more leverage, and that affords them to be able to put in a slightly shorter handles, so you can have a more compact tool that has the very same amount of force. And this actually ends up weighing about a third less than this, and is really nice. Uh, I will have in the description. I'll try to look up the brand of this tool, but these have just been phenomenal because of just the more compact nature. The way they design them, you can see how that handle gets real close to the beam, so they don't waste any space in the design. They have another nice feature where they have multiple holes drilled, so this would normally be a six position adjustment, but those two holes, you can see the little finger goes over the top of the second hole. That's an offset, so now that actually is a 12 position adjustment, depending on you, whether you put the screw in hole one or hole two. And if we actually do these side by side to these Jensen's, you can just see the difference of how close they, just how it's all been compacted in. If we open these up, we can see that that actually its stop is where it's hitting the lower beam. You can see the big airspace in there. There's almost no airspace there. So those are some of the small features and engineering differences in ratcheting crimpers. That can make a big difference to usability. A smaller crimper that's lighter weight is going to be a more of a go-to tool. It's going to use less energy to pick up and uh, carry around, etc. Even though nice heavy tools like these are real heavy duty, you're not using these as a hammer. You don't need to have a crimper that weighs, you know, three pounds. When a crimper that weighs, you know, two pounds will do everything that one does and last easily as long. This is a wonderful crimper. The, and then, well, I'll finish up with the comparison. And then here's some good Amphenols. Amp is also a very high quality brand, a professional grade. So these, uh, they make tools that would be used in production, you know, whether it's on service trucks or even on, you know, manufacturing floors. A lot of times if you're mass producing, you'll have automated crimpers. But for, you know, custom wiring and assembly work, uh, brands like Amp and Jensen and JVI, etc., are some of the professional tools you would get. And they do have professional prices. On average, these type of ratcheting crimpers here, up there, are all going to be somewhere around $100. Some, you know, with certain dies, you know, you can find cheap for like $60 or $70. And then some others that you think will be $60 or $70 are actually $180. And it's just the nature of the tool because they're complex and they really need to be made high quality that actually last uh, a reasonable amount of time. Just like any other quality hand tools, you kind of get what you pay for. And so here's the Amphenols and they're kind of interesting too. They work pretty well. They don't have a multi offset on the screw head, but instead they have nine positions on their adjustment wheel. And that's one of the first things you're gonna look for. If it's any crimper worth even owning, it's going to have some type of cam so that you can actually adjust it. So if it's just you're having to squeeze too hard to get the ratchet to release, then you adjust the cam, you know, minus 
a little one position to loosen up. And if it's just too loose, then you would adjust it positive and minus makes it looser and plus makes it tighter. It's really pretty simple on these. The other difference is just how you like to work because we have straight crimpers here like these. We have these which are at 45 degrees. And then we have these which would be at 90 degrees. So as you can see, depending on kind of how you crimp and how you, you like to work, you can get a style of tool that fits your exact work style. And that's another advantage of all these different crimpers is being able to find ones that really work specifically for you because the idea of these tools is to in increase efficiency and get you a better paycheck. And all these crimpers work spectacularly. You know, when you, I'll sacrifice this fitting, but when you do that, you just will put in a fitting like this. And what's interesting is there is just, this is perfectly measured so that it sits right along that shelf. And you have, obviously this is the big coax, so you just take and, and in my error, I actually realized that these have B and C. Uh, these have two, so there's actually three common sizes, which there would be this coaxial cable size, this size, and I'll have to, I don't even know what the sizes are. I was going to look them up. It's actually kind of hard to find, but there's essentially three different sizes, and I actually even got confused myself. Or the dies on these are the small and medium size, or on these larger ones, it has the coaxial cable. So anyway, what was supposed to happen with this, but it did get over crimped, is like this one, you'd manually put on this little sleeve and then you push this in and then you slide the sleeve down and over and then you'd crimp it. And so I'll go and crimp this little sleeve. We should get a good proper hex out of this one. Nope, this needs the next smaller size. Let's see how this works out for me. Okay, I guess I didn't have any good demonstrations. It turns out that you really need these little collars to have a cable inside them to keep them to kind of hold their shape. Otherwise, they just want to fold and uh, get pinched inappropriately instead of crimping properly. I never actually tried uh, crunching those without act actually having a cable inside. Anyway, that was the end of this review and comparison. Um, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And I'll plan for a future video where I actually kind of test and demonstrate all these different crimpers that I have. But just talking about them, comparing them, usually is a plenty long enough video rather than uh, moving on to those really long half hour plus videos when it's easier just to break it apart and gives me a chance to make a video in the future. Anyway, uh, once again, please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.